Welcome back to Inspiring Builds. I'm Dan, and today I have a special guest with me, and we are going to build a... Soccer Rebounder. Let's get started on the build. This Soccer Rebounder is the best way to improve passing technique, ball control, and shooting to bring your soccer game to the next level. We built this out of 3 quarter inch plywood, making it heavy duty to stay in place while providing a bounce that is conducive of real match conditions and folding brackets that lock. This is a dual angle rebounder where you can have it flat or flip it over so it's angled where the ball will deflect and come back to you in the air. The folding brackets are self-locking so they stay open when in use and fold shut when putting it away for storage, taking up less space or transporting in your vehicle. We tried to think of everything on this build and added a handle for carrying it and we'll show you how we personalized it to top it off. If you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any of these tutorials. Pick out your favorite color exterior primer, paint, and clear coat for wood. We used Rust-Oleum spray paint. What's a better deal, man? It looks like a 2x4 is 28 bucks and a 4x4 four is $43. So if we had to buy two 2x4s, two what would that be? 57. 57, yeah. 57 and some change? Yep. So is 50 something greater than, you know, 43 bucks? Yep. Which one should we get? Bottom one. Nice. So since that was a better deal, we will just take the 4x4 four four and rip it down in half and make it two 2x4s. Two mm -hmm. For this build, I used four cans of spray paint, one can of clear coat, one four foot by four foot sheet of three quarter inch plywood, and four folding brackets that lock that I will provide a link to in the video description. The total cost came to $91.15, which was a huge cost savings from ones I saw online. For the customization, we used Microsoft Word and printed off a template. With it only being one letter, the font size was 500 and we selected Arial Black. Cut out the inside, which is all of the black ink, as we will be using this later to customize the board. Make sure to take your time with this step for a high quality end result. Use a straight edge to draw a diagonal line from each corner. I prefer to clamp down my straight edge so it doesn't move. You can use a variety of items for a straight edge, such as steel like I had close by, a level, lumber, etc. If using lumber, I find that plywood or MDF works best. This will create the angle for the legs. Next, measure 18 inches over on each side of the board, and I do this by measuring over in two spots, then using a square to draw my line, ensuring it's straight. This will be the width of each of the legs. Lastly, mark 3 inches down from the top on each side of the board and use a straight edge to mark the cut line to trim off 3 inches from the top of each leg. Before cutting, I scribble lines on the scrap sections that are going to get cut off. You can complete this build with only a jigsaw and drill if you would like. Blue tape helps with tear out, especially when using a jigsaw or circular saw. You can also use a table saw or miter saw like I choose to do. I cut the 18 inch wide legs first to make the plywood easier to work with. I then cut the top 3 inch section off of each leg, completing all of the 90 degree cuts and finished up cutting each angle cut on both legs to complete all of the cuts for the legs. I find that marking the sections we scribbled on earlier that isn't being used for the project helps me avoid making mistakes. You can see the blue tape makes a nice clean cut with no tear out. After both legs were cut, I clamped them together and used a flush trim router bit to make them identical. Remove any labels from the legs and it's ready to sand. 
I used 120 grit and then followed up with a 220 grit on all sides. Remember to sand in the direction of the wood grain. On the other two foot by four foot plywood, I marked out the handle location. From the edge of the board, make a mark at 21 and a half inches and 26 and a half inches over, and additional marks at one and a half inches and three and a half inches down. Use a straight edge and mark the cut lines. I decided to go with a nice size handle with a five inch wide by two inch high cutout. Earlier I mentioned being able to complete this build with only a jigsaw and drill so I show a couple of different methods. I prefer a plunge router. If using a jigsaw, drill a starter hole in each of the four corners to make the process easier. The handle was the only cutout needed on this board and it's ready to sand with 120 grit then 220 grit. Wipe it down to get it ready to paint. Steven strokes all the way down. Okay. There you go. Good job. We use three cans of Rust-Oleum charcoal gray paint and a satin finish, applying two coats to all sides. Okay. Good job, buddy. Let's get even coverage. Okay. okay. For the personalization, use the template from earlier, painter's tape, and a utility knife. Position and trace out the template over the blue tape. For the cutout, make sure to use a sharp blade. I finished with a new sharp blade and it made it 100% easier. I didn't need it, but put down cardboard I was recycling to avoid any overspray. Rust-Oleum Spring Green with the gloss finish was used here, sticking with an all letter G theme. After the paint dries, the leg assembly process is ready. Mark 5 inches over on each side of the board as shown and use a straight edge to make a line. Next, measure seven inches down from the top and four inches up from the bottom for the center mark to install the brackets. Place the brackets flush against the line we marked five inches over and use the middle hole in the brackets to make them even on both legs. Install a couple of screws on each bracket and ensure you are square and then install the rest of the screws. Do a test to open and close. Your legs should not be flush. After making adjustments like I will show you on the next leg, it opened and closed perfectly. Secure the brackets to the board and use a spacer to make sure the leg is even with the bottom of the bracket. You do not want it flush with the board. I found that setting the leg on two carpenter squares aligned with the bottom of the bracket. The legs opened and closed perfectly and auto locked when opened as you just heard.
As a final step, I sprayed two coats of Rust-Oleum clear coat in a satin finish. Stick around to see how this soccer rebounder is used to help take your soccer game to the next level. Nice left footed shot. Good job, man. Good shot. There you go. Good one. I like it. I really appreciate you watching. If you like this video, I have another one queued up for you in the corner that you'd probably like as well. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, comment, share, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I release new videos.